Hello everyone, welcome to Cartoon Season. I am Tyler, and this is the show where we talk about all different types of cartoons and cartoon related things. Today, obviously going to be the B movie, or I guess just B movie. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get into that, a movie that has been memed over and over. What was, what was the biggest one? It was when... Um, when, like, I forget what the what started it, but it was something on like YouTube where they would play the B movie, like, like when something else was said in a video, the entire B movie would play, and then they would modify it, and it would be things like, oh, I mean, I actually think when it started, it wasn't B movie, but then people really like turned it into the B movie, like the whole B movie would play, or like. B movie, but every time the word B is said, the B movie plays, so it's like a hundred hour video. Anyway, that's what we're talking about today. B movie, a couple things to discuss. Um, we're gonna talk about Barry and Vanessa, the like weirdness of that, <laughs> that whole thing. Um, and then I want to talk about Barry actually fighting for the honey because I think on the outside, this movie is just a dumb movie about bees, I guess, but I think when you really get into it, it is. It is a little bit of a deeper story where, you know, the bees are trying to fight for something that's there, something that is literally being stolen from them. Um, and at the end, you realize that maybe there is some kind of, uh, like, relationship that can be formed because it turns out that if we don't make honey, then then bad things happen. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that. And let's get into that right now. So like I said, we're going to start off with Barry and Vanessa. Weird relationship, right? He's a bee. She's a human. I think that cartoons are probably the only thing that could make this work. Um, obviously, live action would be kind of weird. I don't think that would work in any sense. Um, but, you know, that is the beauty of animation. And I think we just kind of forget about it. <laughs> you know, even though there are some very adult things in this movie and kind of things they allude to. Um... You know, and but uh, you know, I also feel like that the movie uh, that the movie is very self-aware that it knows this is a ridiculous concept, and it knows that this is just really dumb. <laughs> you know, because like it's one thing for talking bees to exist, right? Like, there's the I don't know, I guess like uh, uh, like realization, observation, observation is the word I was looking for. There's like an observation about Pixar movies where it's like, oh, every movie Pixar decides to just give something emotions, right? So like with Toy Story, what if toys had emotions, right? Um, and then it got ridiculous when people would say, you know, people would point out Inside Out. It's like, what if we gave emotions emotions, right? Um, you know, but that's how, you know, it's just a dumb like through line with with Pixar movies, especially the, the older ones, right? Like Nemo, what if you give, you know, aquatic creatures emotions or... Um, you know, so with bee movie, it's not really a weird thing, right? What if we made bees more human-like and we gave them emotions and, you know, we we, put, we told a story like that. So it's not a weird thing, but with them now introducing a relationship to a human that is not just ridiculous, but it doesn't make any sense. You know, it like that relationship doesn't work, not only on paper, <laughs> but also in real life. Like, I guess an emotional connection can be there. But anything physical doesn't work. Like, it just doesn't. You know, like, uh, there's no scenario in which that works. Um, but they do kind of play around with, again, the more personal connection. Where, you know, even even on the surface, you know, he is a bee and she's a florist. So it's like, oh, of course, that's, that's a very, e you know, I feel like that's a very easy thing to write in. <laughs> or it's like, oh... What if we were to give her a job, uh, Vanessa? What if we were to give Vanessa a job? It's like, oh, what should it be? Oh, well, he's a bee. Bees like flowers. Make her a florist, you know? Because the only other thing they could do is make her work in honey, but but that would be you know counterproductive to the you know to the whole story they're trying to tell. So make her a florist. That you know that gives a little bit extra on the on the attraction for you know for Barry. Um, you know, flowers are everything for them. 
um, you know, then we actually get into the story, you know, off of surface level stuff. We get into the story and it's like, oh, classic, classic uh, catalyst, right? Where one character saves another character's life. You start to get infatuated. We can go down a rabbit hole of stories that, you know, uh, misinterpret love for infatuation. They are two different things. Um, you know, but th but that is kind of how their relationship starts. It's, you know, Vanessa saves Barry from uh, her boyfriend, I guess, um, from, from, from killing him, <laughs> from literally killing him. We got, you know, we got some Timberlands on. They don't call them Timberlands, but that's what they are. You know, Timberland owns that silhouette of sneaker. So, um, and she saves his life, you know? I mean, he doesn't really do anything wrong. You know, uh, you know, another thing that this movie kind of explores which i really like is that you know bees you know honeybees aren't evil creatures you know i think when you're young you're told to stay away from bees you know because bees can be dangerous right they you know they have a stinger but i don't feel like bees are necessarily any more dangerous than any other animal like i feel like most animals um can hurt you in one way or another and then with bees specifically, I mean, I guess all animals, I guess, it, you know, that is what they say, right? Where like animals usually are more afraid of you than you are of them. Um, but with honeybees, I feel like honeybees, their their reputation has been coming around a lot more lately. Because you really realize that they they don't want to sting you, right? And it, it's usually like the second thing you learn about bees, <laughs> right? Is that they make honey, you got the honey pollen, whatever. And then they have a stinger, but... They don't want to sting you because when bees sting you, they die, right? You know, it, it's, a, it's a last ditch effort. They are literally like a, you know, they're they're giving their life for the cause, right? For the for the queen. Um, and I like that they do kind of explore that here too, where it's like, Barry wasn't really doing anything wrong. He was just in the apartment. He wanted to get out. <laughs> he doesn't realize what glass is, of course. So he thought he could just fly out of there, but he didn't want to sting anyone. He didn't want to hurt anyone. You know, why Why would you just automatically hurt a bee that's in your house? You know, open a window, open a couple windows, let it fly out. You know, it didn't get in there on purpose. You know, bees, there, there's nothing inside of a, you know, inside of a home for a bee, right? So it kind of plays with that. And, and, and right there, that also, is, you know, is the first little splinter. We're not going to say a wedge, but it's a little bit of a splinter in the relationship of Vanessa and the husband, whose name I don't remember. Um, he was right there. He's like, he wasn't hurting anybody. You know what I mean? And then he gets all defensive. He's like, why are you taking the bee's side? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's, it was, it's ludicrous. Um, yeah, but that, that, that kind of spark with their relationship, right? And then they go further. And we guys, you know, start to get more, more and more romantic, right? Where they, they have a picnic date, you know? And that's like just like so many layers to break down there but just essentially they're on a picnic day and you know they have food they have drinks and everything laying on a, on a, on a, on a picnic uh, blanket couldn't think of the word picnic blanket um they're having fun right they're they're getting together they're quickly becoming friends maybe more than friends right before our eyes you know they they you know again to the to the boyfriend's dismay they ruin yogurt night yogurt night that's a, that's a ridiculous concept don't even know what that is why do you only have a you have a you have a night for yogurt is that a weekly thing you only eat yogurt weekly seems like a strange tradition you know like like taco tuesday is one thing right you pick a day you have tacos every week that's cool right because that, that's a dinner you know you can't have tacos every day but it's like with yogurt yogurt is light enough that you can have yogurt every day if you wanted to you know even if they were gonna have frozen yogurt not the healthiest thing in the world, but I feel like that's odd. I don't know. One day a week you're having frozen yogurt. I mean, you like it enough to have a, to make a night out of it, but and you limit yourself to one week. Strange, you know. Strange again. It's like saying you can, you can only have you know, uh, you know, eggs and toast once a week. You know, like why not have it every day for breakfast? Now there's a thing of wanting to make it. Maybe you don't want to make it every day, but strange, strange concept. Um, and they get even deeper, right? Where each, you know, as the movie goes on, we get deeper and deeper into who they are. And, you know, we started off, like I said, be in a florist, right? But, but they become more than that. You know, they, they actually talk about each other's species lives, you know, and that's another really cool thing the movie does where it, 
it lets them learn about each other. You know, again, not just Barry and Vanessa, but like bees can have a now bees can have a stronger grasp on what humans do and what they're like, and you know, and, and vice versa, right? Um, you know, I really like the conversation towards the beginning, even where they're just walking in the street and you know they're asking each other questions, right? And you know, w- one of the ones I remember is that Vanessa asked the very obvious question of like, "Well, you're a bee. Why don't you just fly everywhere?" face value that's a, that's a very valid question you know but even barry is like well it's it's tiring you know i mean you you can run right why don't you just run everywhere instead of walk it's like okay valid that's a that's a fair point and you know just like little things like that I and mean, again that isn't really what i was talking about earlier where it's like they learn more about each other and how they live their lives but even small stuff like that grows right it's like these these little questions get them out the way and you get the deeper questions right you start to learn about each other's society and how they run and, you know, the bee society being nonstop, quick pace, not even quick pace, nonstop pace, you know, for, for the queen because you only live so long and people die and, you know, all to do with honey and then with humans and how they have their society set up and, you know, all the structure and everything. So, um, we have another nice moment where they sit and they have coffee, um, you know, they look out into the world, they kind of talk more about what they want to do with their lives what the world is like how that shaped them again at this point (laughs) you know they they talk like they're together you know what i mean um it's 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 very sweet um very weird but again the way the movie portrays it you know i think it's very innocent and it's just like hey these are two sentient beings who like each other you know um and they also, oh, his name is Ken, right? I, I did write that down. They, they like gaslight Ken. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. Cause it's just like, <laughs> it's just, cause like for most of the movie, Ken sucks, right? He sucks as a person. He seems kind of self-centered. Um, you know, he likes, he likes bragging about himself a little too much. Um, you know, he, he, to us, he can't really see the other side, right? Like, like I mentioned in the beginning, with Barry first coming into the home, it's like, we well, didn't have to attack the bee, right? He can just leave. Wasn't doing anything to upset you. You were just making assumptions. Right? So understandably, not really a big fan of Ken in the beginning and for most of the movie. But then towards the end, he just like, <laughs> he, he, he somehow becomes the voice of reason. Where it's like, he's, <laughs> he's just so flustered because he's like, he's a bee. <laughs> he's like he's a bee am i the only one that doesn't see how ridiculous this is you know because he's right because in that moment ken is the only one that's saying the thing that we're all thinking as the audience again up until this point it it, he everything just seems to be about him you know he, he he doesn't like change you know he seems threatened by barry rightfully so but it it it's just like he's not a character that we really sympathize with, or at least I didn't. I, you know, I'll say I, I don't want to speak for everyone that saw the movie, but I, you know, I do feel like the, the the movie set him up to be that character of like he sucks, get him out of here. But then at the end, he again he he has the only logic. He's like he's a bee. This doesn't make any sense. He is a he's an insect. He this like you you are in a relationship with a non-human. You know, this is weird. But they gaslight him into thinking it's totally normal. Like, this happens all the time. <laughs> and it's so funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that is that is kind of the, the arc of their relationship, right? Where it starts off with B coming, uh, you know, Barry coming into the home. And, you know, Vanessa kind of feeling for her. Like, hey, we don't got to kill a bee just because it's in the house. All the way to gaslighting her boyfriend into thinking that we're having a romantic relationship with the bee is a normal thing that everyone does perfectly sums up what has happened between these two throughout the movie you know and, and, and there's more of some stuff i didn't mention there's obviously the ending where you know she she helps him you know get the the pollen and the flowers to the plate and everything but um you know that right there i just kind of wanted to touch on all the the like oddness of their relationship like how it works but also how it shouldn't work <laughs> um but yeah and then the other thing, like I said, I do want to talk about, um, you know, Barry saving the honey, right? So aside from 
talking bees aside from us getting into their like quirky um you know hive mind stuff aside from the not quite problematic but probably not of a thing that would happen in a future movie of a bee and a human having a romantic relationship in an animated film probably won't happen again aside from all of that like i said at the top um you know i do feel like this movie does have a nice plot um you know when it comes to the honey you know so barry he finds out that humans are bottling and selling honey right the first time he sees they're in like a you know like a little market he sees honey everywhere right he freaks out because it's like this is ours you know like you are stealing this from us we you know bees bees never signed off on you invading our hives and taking our honey this is this is ours we we do this you know we don't you know we don't come into your place and i don't know what a what do humans make you know i mean humans don't really make anything in the same way that bees make honey there's no real like one-to-one -one comparison but you know what i mean like we don't we, we don't steal stuff of yeah of yours why would you do this freaks out right and then top it all off not not all of it but to, you know another layer of it he finds out about beekeepers like these guys are criminals these guys are what these, these guys job is to come into beehives and sedate us and then like steal our stuff <laughs> like like you would be called a criminal if you went into someone else's home um you know through some sleeping gas or whatever sleeping gas grenades through their windows put a gas mask on and went in and just stole all their stuff <laughs> you'd be a criminal you'd be on the run you would go to jail you know what i mean so this kind of the energy that, that he's coming with and it goes all the way to them going to court something that i did not imagine or we probably wouldn't imagine if he came into this movie blind. But I wouldn't imagine that there would be a like a like a Supreme Court esque, uh, you know, sequence like like third act basically. Um, they go to court and there's all these uh, theatrics that aren't, aren't really imp you know, aren't, aren't really um, pertinent to the point that I'm trying to make. Um, you know, but then at the end of the day, they you know they do win the case. You know, they do win it. Um, touching on some stuff I said earlier where they do realize that bees are not bad. Um, you know, this is our stuff. You did steal it. We, we literally manufacture this, you know, like it's, you know, it's not like you're stealing stuff that we took from nature, right? You know, it's not like we're, we're collecting berries from nature and putting them in our hive and you're like, Hey, let me get them berries, you know, still wrong. But bee, but honey is literally something that bees like produce from their bodies. You know, you can't get it any other way. I mean, I'm sure maybe science in 2022, maybe science can has, already has artificial honey. I'm sure that exists. Um, but that does not exist in the world of bee movie. So we're not even going to talk about it. Um, I do win the case. And then another ridiculous aspect of the film where bees go to court and win, <laughs> you know, like, do bees have rights? You know? Do bees have rights in, in the, you know, in the eye of the law? Let's just stick with America, maybe? Is there anything about that, you know? I actually did see something recently on the news about, um, what was it? It was about the elephant at the Bronx Zoo. Uh, Bronx, New York, of course. Uh, the elephant. There's only one elephant at the Bronx Zoo. I actually saw the elephant. Uh, it was a couple years ago at this point. No, probably a few years ago, definitely before COVID. Um, I think it was probably 2019. No, it couldn't have been. It'd be 2018, because I was still, I was still working at my retail job at that point in 2018, I believe. Uh, I went to the Bronx Zoo, saw the elephant. Great, right? There's a thing where people are fighting for the elephant, saying that um, it's like cruel that the elephant is by itself. There's no other elephants at the Bronx Zoo. It's the only elephant, um, and also like. The enclosure that's in is too small. Now we don't see it as small because, you know, it's a big space. But like, you know, if you, you know, I guess their whole point is they're comparing it to how much space elephants in nature have, and you know, it'd be like, you know, it, you know, it'd be like if if I was only um, confined to the space of my bedroom for my whole life. That is, that is all the space that I could ever exist in. Probably wouldn't be too cool. Probably, probably wouldn't love that, right? 
Um, I mean, I have a lot of stuff in here that I could probably. Anyway, that's not, that's not the point. But you know what I mean? Like that's so you know they're they're basically like trying to give elephant rights, you know, akin to human rights. It's like this, you know, this is it's a cruel living conditions. Anyway, the whole point of that tangent was with bees, where it's like, do bees have rights? Do bees actually have the right to go to court? <laughs> You know, not in real life, because obviously, I mean, bees can't talk. I mean, they maybe can, but the technology to speak with them uh, in a common tongue is not uh, readily available to the public. Maybe some government places have it, some Illuminati stuff, I don't know. But uh, moving past that, uh, we, we, we get further. That's not the end of the movie. Bees now have too much honey. So what do they do? They stop working. We got all the honey in the world. Well, honey in the world, honey never spoils, right? That's that's like the thing people say. Even though it probably definitely does. You know, it doesn't honey start to like crystallize. Oh, that's weird. Don't don't want that. Um But yeah. They have too much honey, they stop working. And, th- and th- this is another nice uh there's another nice point I think they're making. Cause I feel like that would happen in real life too. You know, something that people are afraid of, I guess. You know, I think there's, um, you know, a nice healthy middle that the working structure of America could really learn to adopt. But I do definitely think that people should have jobs and they should work. You know, I'm, you know, I don't know. This, this is a whole tangent I could go on. I'm, I'm not going to this to make the episode too long. But it's a nice little moment that they're trying to do here where it's like bees have too much. So they don't work. But bees working are essential, right? Because making honey, not really essential. You know, you know, in terms of the end product, but um, them moving around the pollen, you know, is, is 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 very vital, right? Not only to flowers, but to other stuff as well. To like, uh, like other plants, other fruits, other you know, like like you know, there's other vegetation in the world that needs bees to do that. And then we get further into the ramifications of that, and there's like no more flowers in the world, no more pollen, so you know. Things are dying. Um, you know, I think this movie really focuses on flowers and just like flowers that in our mind are just purely aesthetic. But I think in the real world, that would really cause some harsh things to happen. Because it's not just like flowers that are pretty and smell nice. Like there's other plants that rely on it that we need that like the food chain needs to be stable. Um, that's why there's a whole thing going around with like save the bees because bees are actually very, very important. Um, and we don't and the general public just doesn't really care <laughs> um, But at the end of the day, um, you know, they they have a ridiculous way to save the world um, You know, they fly out the flowers the last flowers in the world back to where they got to be they pollinate them grow up from there Everything's great, right? Uh, we got all the fruits and vegetables back. It's all good um, And then bees and humans come to an understanding about like how this relationship should work and we have a funny little thing at the end where like barry that's like his job is he starts to fight for animals and like what humans take from them and how we can come to and it, you know it's some sort of agreement um I don't, I don't remember what animal he was talking to at the end but you know there's lots of other animals that i'm sure we you know we we, we take stuff from um you know so um but yeah yeah i think again i think that movie's very very weird um on the surface and a little, a little deeper than the surface too but you know i do think there's a nice little story that's told in there um i think overall it's good you know i think that it's been memed to death and i think a lot of people may not like the movie just because of that because of how much it was pushed down like the internet's throat for like six months <laughs> but um yeah I, th- I, th- I, mean, I think this is a fine movie it's funny you know it's got you know it's got some very clever moments um, and it's just ridiculous, and that's not, and, and, and all that mixed together. I feel like can make, at the very least, a a, a decent animated film, and it is what it what, what it did, you know. Um, and it does have staying power, you know. It's the same thing as like Shrek. I don't think B movies on the same level as Shrek, but similar to Shrek, where it's like Shrek is a really good animated movie, and I think initially you may not see that. Uh, maybe we didn't see it at the time as much as we do now in retrospect, but. It's good. Um, but yeah, that is everything I wanted to discuss about B-Movie. Um, that's it. Let me know what your thoughts are on B-Movie about the relationship as well as the court 
case. <laughs> um, uh, what else? What else we got? Other episodes. Other, check out other episodes of Cartoon Season on the Tiger T YouTube channel or other podcast platforms. Um, links for everything will be in the description as always. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, until next time, watch more animated movies and let me know what else you want to you want to hear me talk about.